This is a, a picture of my Aunt Verna Carter in front of one of her bookstores, Carter's Old Books. Photo taken, I was there when the, this photo was taken almost 60 years ago. Um, my aunt did something that I later did. She never had a television set when I, I knew her. She was a reader. This photo in her window reads, Help Fight TV Commercialism. Buy a book. Wonderful place. Any of her bookstores, they were lively. She um, introduced me to writers when they would come in the store, mostly journalists, teachers, professors, and one of them was Dwight Swain. This was uh, in Oklahoma City. And Dwight Swain taught there, Norman, and uh, he came in all the time. She introduced me by saying, this is my nephew, Robbie. He's going to be a writer. And Dwight Swain said, uh, oh, what are you writing? Well, at the time, I was, I had just drawn a picture, and I was telling stories about it. And... Uh, he said, well, are you writing in first person, second person, third? I didn't know what he was talking about. And uh, we had some trouble communicating initially. After that, though, every time he came in, he didn't want to talk about scene sequel or anything else. He wanted to talk about person, first, second, third, and point of view, point of view character. He said, that's vitally important to think about that and, uh, and know how you're going to write it. And I, my wife really likes first person novels, first person fiction. And I rarely do. Um, I like mostly third person, usually third person limited with multiple points of view over the course of a book. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little more, but uh, learned a lot about writing. It, this was just one of her bookstores. She owned several different locations. And uh, Vernon Carter. I talk briefly about some Social science studies reported in Epstein's book, Range. Um, and it's about uh, how successful education is, particularly higher education. And there's uh, the correlation between uh, basically thinking and GPA zero. Traits that earn good grades <coughs> at the university do not include critical thinking abilities of any broad significance. Biology and English majors did poorly on everything that was not directly related to their field. Now, I don't think this would surprise any adult, but it's possible it would surprise English majors, I suppose. Uh, what I've found is if people learned about scene sequel writing in their formal education, they accept it. If they didn't learn it in school, they're very skeptical about it. Many reject it out of hand. 
but they reject most everything out of hand that they didn't learn about in school. Science students learn the facts of their specific field without understanding how science should work in order to draw true conclusions. Almost none of the students in any major showed a consistent understanding of how to apply methods of evaluating truth they had learned in their own discipline to other areas. So I'm not picking on English majors in particular. But Flynn's conclusion, there is no sign that any department attempts to develop anything other than narrow critical competence. Now, when I'm talking about and teaching scene sequel writing, uh, if you think you're going to have a lot of people happy that you've learned it, you're going to sooner or later run across people who oppose it for uh, without any rational basis. It's just that it's new to them or they don't like things that you know. And uh, even though it's very old, it's been taught at OU for about a century in their professional writing program. And even those who do like scene sequel writing often only like Swain's version uh, and they reject Walter S. Campbell's version. And Campbell was a Rhodes Scholar in many ways far more successful than Dwight Swain and arguably his method is um, more complicated than Dwight Swain's. So I could see why people are, who are of simpler mind would reject it. This is a portion of Hemingway's The Sun Also Rises. Talked about that in an earlier video. So he called up against the noise of the dam. All right, I shouted. This book is written in first person by I. It's talking to Bill. I got my rod. He was fishing. Fishing rod. I did not feel the first trout strike. Got some trout, I laid them out. He's talking about how he saw them. I put it in the shade of a tree. It was very hot on the dam, so I put my worm can in the shade. I sat against the trunk of two of the trees that grew together. I walked up the rope, got out the two bottles of wine. All right, this was just reporting incident. The writing is generally described as clean, and I agree. It's journalism written as fiction. I've talked about rewriting. This is now in public domain. Sun also rises. Rewriting this in scene sequel form. Well, this would require a change, at least in my mind, uh, that uh, the weak-minded 
possibly English majors, uh, just would not accept because I would change it to third person. There would be more than one point of view. I personally, I think Dwight Swain would approve, but I don't know. I'll talk some more about how Swain wrote in a bit. I ordered a paperback a long time ago. It's uh, good. Uh, the Weapon from Eternity. Armchair Fiction. A 1955, so when this is published, I do have a Kindle version. Weapon from Eternity, Dwight V. Swain. Selected the group himself. You read this, it's third person. By the way, if you're hearing the sounds of crickets, those are crickets. As I write, it's record it's uh, 1 30 a.m. and crickets have descended on my abode windows open or closed you can't stop the sound this is September 2024 so Hemingway wrote, The Sun Also Rises in First Person. Most of Swain's fiction is written in third person. My opinion, because I don't know that it's a fact, but it's my opinion that scene sequel writing works best in third person. So that is how I would rewrite The Great Gatsby and The Sun Also Rises. I will rewrite uh, some passages and share those with you, uh, showing both the original and my adaptations.